The yurt is a traditional dwelling that comes out of Eastern Asia, Mongolia typically. So what really excites us about yurts is that they're tents primarily, and as tents they're lightweight, they're minimal footprint, um, really portable, and they keep you connected to the outdoors. So when you're in a yurt, it's not like a traditional building where you have hard wall and you're disconnected and you don't hear what's going on outside. You hear the wind blowing, you know, even if it's minus 30 outside and you're waking up, you hear the wind, you hear the birds singing, you're really very connected to what's going on outside. So this is a bundle for one yurt, one 226 square foot yurt, that's 17 feet in diameter. Our entire structure is really one exoskeleton that collapses, so this is the entire structure. We have a frame here that deploys like an umbrella, and of course the yurt is primarily a tensile uh, building, so the thing that's really keeping it together is this steel cable. And at this size, this is a 3 16 cable, and it connects together, it's set to a very specific length, and that really determines the height of the yurt. So this is all done, click this together, and that'll determine really the height of the yurt once it's up. Now once our structure is up, uh, then we're gonna wrap felt around it, that's what this layer is here, and out on the outside of the felt, we're gonna get our outside cover that's weatherproof and that keeps out all the water and wind. So we've got an insulation layer, an outer layer, and then our structural layer here in the white ash. This is a central compression ring in progress. And in a, a traditional yurt, a Mongolian yurt, this is called the tenu. This purpose here is like at the peak of a roof. In a traditional house, in your house, you have a peak here. Well, we don't have a peak in a yurt. We have a ring that's serving the point of that peak. So your roof rafter can slot into here and becomes an articulating joint. There's our ring. This is a four foot clear dome that goes on a yurta. And this is an operable dome. So this dome allows us, when we install it, to be raised and lowered by the user. And it's the primary way you're venting your yurt. So dome, a functional dome is really important because you're convecting heat like a chimney all the time, escaping out of the, um, out of the yurt. We mount this to a finished ring. We're going to mount some hardware to this stone so that this stone can raise and lower on this, uh, this ring and allow hot air to escape. So we've taken this yurt apart, right, to show you some of the layers and expose the frame here, the insulation and the roof. We're going to get the felt back on here. So if you want to give me a hand, Danielle, we'll, we'll roll on the felt. Sure. So now that we've got our our felt insulation on. We're gonna just cover the, bring the bonnet of the felt insulation over the wall. So that's our felt insulation layer on the roof. And then the outer cover, do the same. This is 100% wool felt. This is sheep's wool. That's needled to a very specific density and thickness. This is a technical felt. And it's, it's needled to a radiant layer in the back. So what this is doing is bringing the Mongolian tradition of this beautiful, warm, rich wool felt, very luxurious, is giving us a thermal insulation, but it's marrying that to a more modern reflective insulation. So what you'll find in a more modern yurt made in North America typically is bubble wrap. Bubble wrap with a radiant layer is a very effective insulator, but it doesn't breathe. And in our climate, in North America here anyway, absolutely critical. Maybe the number one thing you consider in a yurt is a breathable shell and, and insulation. Wool felt, it's hard to beat this traditional material. A round raised pad that you see here in the yurt, really, really important here, this piece. We have to give ourselves a round raised platform because a structure is meant to sit on this platform, be anchored here to this, either this hefty platform or this one, but it's the fabric really that's designed to wrap around the wall here. In our case, there's a nice rope sewn into the bottom here, and this will tighten like a belt and give us a draft-free environment, rodent-free and so on. Here's the the belt sewn into the bottom of our wall. Here it is coming together under the door, help of a ratchet strap. 
and this allows us to get a lot of tension here on this fabric so that's extremely hard to get to get under there gives us a near perfect seal the yurt in mongolia has been around for thousands of years so as far as we're concerned it's the cleverest structure ever designed we're just trying to bring a bit of extra functionality to it in a yurta versus a traditional Mongolian yurt, we have big windows here. Where in a traditional Mongolian yurt, you wouldn't have windows. You, know, you wouldn't have a dome to, that opens light and you would have a cover there, typically that is a smoke hole that you would open for venting. This is very much a tent window with a sewn-in mesh. Now this particular window is set up for winter use, so you, it's hard to tell, but you can hear that there's a clear cover on the outside. So in the winter, we would set this window up this way with a clear cover on all the time, keeping out draft, keeping out water and so on. Now this window is set up as a, in a summer setup. So you have a sewn in insect mesh, you have an awning on the outside that's stretched out so that we can let cool air in, but still keep the sun out. If it's quite cold and want to keep in our heat, then we would zip our insulation shut. The insulation for your window is sewn into the wall. And this is very handy when it's minus 30 and you want to batten down the hatches. When we started working with yurts, you know, we were so passionate about what a yurt was. And in our view, a yurt is a tent. And if you look at the traditional yurts made in, in Mongolia, and when we looked at all the yurts that had been made in North America and made around the world, we just kept coming back to that Mongolian design and saying, all the answers that we want are in tradition already. And there, there's nothing really that we're bringing to this yurt that we would say that we've invented. Truly, everything we've done is taken right out of the Mongolian tradition. The answers are there and we've refined it for, for this climate, made it heavy duty, make it as minimal as we can and make it as lightweight and portable as we can, but uh, keep something very, very close to the tradition. Uh, and that's really ultimately very beautiful.